So welcome everybody to this latest video on 160 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the AQA GCSE Maths June 2017 Higher Paper 1. Now I will have the a copy of the paper in the description below for you to have an attempt at before working through the answers and watching this video and I'll also include the grade boundaries to see what grade you would have got once you've marked your paper. So let's get started on this June 2017 Higher Paper 1 non-calculator paper. So looking at question one, it says simplify 2 to the power 5 times 2 to the power 3. So here what we need to do, as we're multiplying, we just need to simply add the powers. So 5 plus 3 is 8, so it's 2 to the power of 8. For question two, it says circle the reason why these triangles are congruent. So basically the reason for this is because we've got angle, we've got another angle, and we've got a side. So we're looking for ASA. Then with question three, it says, which of these is a geometric progression? Circle your answer. So we're looking for where the, there is a common ratio between each of the numbers. And that is going to be third option. Then moving on to question four, it says A to B equals four to three. Circle the correct statement. So for this, what we need to do first is with these questions, if you just simply join the two ratios together, we get 3b now what as you can see in each of these four options we've got a as the subject so what you need to do is just make a the subject so here we've got a equals and it's going to be 3b over 4 and that is going to be our fourth option then with question 5 it says write 36 on there is uh, write 36 as a product of its primes give your answer in index form so 36 and again, you could go several routes, so you could do 12 times 3, and circle your prime numbers. And so what we end up with is 2 squared times 3 squared. Now if we wrote it in different order, in terms of 3 squared times 2 squared, that would be fine. Question 6, it says the table shows information about times for 10 people to complete a task. These statements are about the mean and the range of the actual times tick the correct box for each statement so here the first option is that the mean could be less than 20 minutes well that's going to be false simply because we've already got one person who's less than 20 minutes the second option is that the mean could be more than 40 minutes which is true because obviously we've got nine that are could be 40 plus so that is going to be true the mean could be less than 19 again that could be true because the six people could be well below uh, the 40 minutes so that's true the range is a uh, could be more than 40 minutes which is true again the range could be less than 40 which is true and the range cannot be more than 60 minutes because then that obviously falls outside the actual amount so for question seven it says three fifths of a number is 162 work out the number so basically what we've got is we've got three parts equals 162 so therefore, one part is going to equal 54. And so therefore, five parts, which represents the whole number, is going to be 54 times 5, which gives me an answer of 270. Then with question 8, it says that x kilometers per hour equals y miles per hour. Use the, eight, the conversion of 8 kilometers per hour equals 5 miles per hour. To write a formula of for y in terms of x. So for this, what we need to do is, just like we did in the previous question, is convert these ratios into fractions. So we get this. Then we want to cross multiply. So we get 5x equals 8y. And what we want to do is we want to make y the subject. So here I've got 5x over 8 equals y, which therefore gives me my answer. So. Then with question 9, it says density equals mass over volume. The mass of solid A is 6 times the mass of solid B. The volume of solid A is 3 times the volume of B. Complete the sentence. So here what we're doing is we're multiplying by 6. The volume we're multiplying by 3. What's that the same as basically multiplying by 2? Then with 9b, it says the average speed equals distance over time. If the distance is halved, so there we are multiplying by 0 0.5, and we are and the time is doubled, 
what does that become well a half divided by two is the same as a half divided by two over one which is the same as a half times one over two same as a quarter and so that is the same as dividing by four then with question 10 it's simultaneous equations so here what we want to do is want to make either the x's or the y's the same it doesn't really matter which one you go for i'm going to go for making the x's the same so what i end up with is 2x plus y equals 18 and 2x minus 2y equals 12. if i take away the two because the x's are both positive and they've got the same amount they disappear and end up with 3y equals 6 so y equals 2 then using x minus y equals 6 y equals 2 so i've got x minus 2 equals 6 so x equals 8 so there is my answer x equals 8 y equals 2. moving on to question 11 it says that billy wants to buy these tickets for a show four tickets four adult tickets cost 15 pounds two child child tickets cost 10 pound a 10 percent booking fee is added to the ticket price 3% is then added to for paying on a credit card. What is the total charge of these tickets when paying by credit card? So first of all, let's add 10% to the adult price. So adult ticket equals, and it's £15 plus 10%, which is £1.50, which is £16.50. Then for a child ticket, that's going to be ten pounds plus ten percent which is one so that becomes eleven pounds so then what i've got to do is work out the price of four and two child tickets so here we've got four times sixteen pound fifty plus two times eleven and four times sixteen fifty gives me sixty six plus twenty two so it comes up to a total of eighty eight pounds but now what I need to do is add that 3%. So here, 1%, what I'm doing there. So 1% of 88 is going to be 88 pence. So then 3% of 88 is going to be 88 pence times 3, which is £2.64. So what I then need to do is add these two amounts up. And this here is my booking fee. And so what I get is 88 plus £2.64, which gives me £90.64. Then moving on to question 12, it says here is a circle touching a square. The area of the square is 64 centimetres squared. Work out the area of the circle. So for here, if the area of a square is 64, that means that the side of the square is going to be the square root of 64, which is 8. And to work out the area of a circle, that's pi times radius squared. So here, if the diameter is 8, therefore the radius is going to be 4. That means then that the area is going to be pi times 4 squared, which is Then moving on to question 13, it says write the number 6,005,200 uh, in standard form. So here we've got 6 and 005,200. So I want to write this number in standard form. So that's going to be 6.0052 times 10 to the power 6. If you added two zeros in front of the 2, that would be absolutely fine uh, they wouldn't mark you down for that but it's not necessary for question 14 again we've got negative x so here all we want to do here is either make it positive by switching the two so i get minus six and and that and three x and so we've got minus two and x so your answer is either going to be minus two is greater than x or you've got x is less than minus 2. So either of those answers would be absolutely fine, but I definitely wouldn't write both. For question 15, it says 1, 1 over 6, 1 over 7, 1 over 8, 1 over 9 are four fractions. How many of these fractions convert to a reoccurring decimal? Now, if it's a reoccurring decimal, 
uh, basically you've got that so if it's not a reoccurring decimal the factors of the denominator will be made up of factors of two and or five only. So what you want to do is you want to basically write four, six, seven, eight, nine as product of their primes. So six is two times three. So that's a reoccurring because you've got a three there. Seven is a prime, so that's just seven. Eight is two times two times two. So that is uh, non-reoccurring. And nine is three times three. So here, what we've got is we've then got six is reoccurring, uh, seven is reoccurring, and one ninth is reoccurring. So we've got three. Then with question 16, it says the fair spinner has five equal sections, one, two, three, four, five. A fair die, a six-sided die, it has five red faces and one green face. The spinner is spun. If the spinner shows an even number, the dice is thrown. And what we need to do is complete this tree diagram. So the probability of a spinner uh, rolling an even number is going to be, well, we've got two even numbers, so that's going to be two over five, and then we've got three over five odd. Now it says that if the spinner shows an even number, the dice is thrown. We've got a branch here. And it's either, in terms of this, we've got red or green. So red is going to be 5 over 6, and green is going to be 1 over 6. The question then says, work out the probability of getting an even number and the colour green. So the even and the colour green is going to be 2 fifths times 1 over 6, which gives me an answer of... 2 over 30 or 1 over 15. So looking at question 17, it says A is the point 2 minus 5, B is the point 4 minus 9, and the question is A, show that the gradient of the line passing through A and B is minus 2. There's a couple of ways in which you can do this. It all depends on how you've been taught. So if I just draw a line here and imagine this is my x-axis, 2 is going to be there, and minus 5 is going to be there, so let's just call that A. And let's just label these points. So that's 2 and this minus 5. And then B is at 4. So let's just imagine 4 is there. And nine, minus 9 is over here. So what I want to do is I want to work out the gradient of that line there. So one way is to draw a triangle. So this space is 4. This space is going to be 4 as well. Uh, actually, it's not it's going to be a little bit different in terms of that. It should be 2. like so and then from here we've got that the gradient is going to be 4 over 2 but because the line's going down it's going to be minus so therefore what we've got is we've got minus 2 as our gradient now another alternative you could do is that the gradient equals we just write this you could use this form of m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 in which your coordinates are x1 y1 and x2, y2, and substituting those values in, what do we get? Well, we get minus 9, minus minus 5, over uh, 4, minus 2. So here we get minus 4 over 2. Gives us so any of those methods will be absolutely fine. Then for question 17b, it says c is the point minus 301, 601. Does C lie on the straight line passing through A and B? Now for this, what we need to do is first of all find the equation of the line. Now we know that M equals minus 2. So we've got Y equals minus 2 plus or X plus C. And then if we use one of the coordinates, so let's go for easy, let's go for 2 minus 5. And I substitute these values of X and Y. I get minus 5 equals minus 2 times 2 plus c. I get minus 5 equals minus 4 plus c. So c equals, and it's going to be minus 1. And so the equation of the line 
is y equals minus 2x minus 1. Now, if the line lies on the line, so if c lies on the line, when x equals minus 301, y should equal 600. So let's try working that out. So y equals minus 2 times minus 301 minus 1. So this then becomes 602 minus 1 equals 601. So the answer is yes, it does. Then looking at question 18, it says that bottles of a drink are for sale at three shops. The normal price of a bottle is the same at each shop. Shop A has buy one bottle, get two more bottles at half price. Shop B has buy three two bottles and get three more uh, bottles at half price. And shop C, you get 30% off a bottle. What is the cheapest way to buy exactly eight bottles? You can buy from more than one shop and you must show your work in three marks. Now, in this, what you need to do is show um, I would say at least two combinations. So if you get it right first time round, it's not going to show because you need to show that it is the cheapest way. Now, looking at this uh, in terms of shop A, in here what we're looking at is you're getting multiples of three. Then with shop B, you are getting multiples of five. And with shop C, you get multiples of one. So either I would say that you can either get shop A plus shop B. You can get shop A times two plus shop C. You can get shop B plus and then three lots and that should be times two, uh three times shop c so i would say working out those three combinations would probably be the best but you should find that the cheapest uh, method is going to be six bottles from shop a plus two bottles from shop but it is important you do show you're working out for those three marks. Now for question 19, it says here is some information about marks of 60 students in a test. And what we need to do is draw a community of frequency diagram. So for this, what we need to do is first of all, create our community of frequency values. So we've got nine, and then we just add the previous community of frequency value to work it out. So we've got nine, 25, 45, 53, and 60. Now this last value should always be your total value. Now what we need to do is plot these values. So if I just zoom out a little bit, yeah, there we go. and what we need to do is plot these values. So here and again, remember that you plot your community values at the upper bound of your group. So the first one I'm going to plot is it was going to start at 40. That's it. Zero. And then at 50, it's at nine there at 60 it's at 25 there or and uh, 70 it's at 45 there and 53 there what you then need to do is carefully join these points up. And again, yours hopefully be a lot more fine. Okay. Now, in the question, it then says, use your graph to estimate the lowest mark of the top 20% of the students. So for this, what we need to look at is the top 20%, which is 80% of 60 is 48 so then what i then need to do is find 48 which is here and then just draw a horizontal line until it hits my curve and then from this i'm dragging it all the way down
and I'm getting around about 74. The answer there, 74. Now looking at question 20, it says work out the diameter of the circle and move of x squared plus y squared equals 64. Now in terms of the equation of a circle, it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r squared equals 64. So r equals the square root of 64, which is plus or minus 8. Now it can't be minus 8 because obviously radius represents length. But again, remember that the question is asking for the diameter. So here, if r equals 8, then d equals 16. So this is going to be our answer here. Now looking at question 21a, it says the diagram shows rectangles a and b. It says rectangle A can be mapped by tri rectangle B by a single transformation. Javid says the only single transformation is a reflection in the y-axis because the rectangles are opposite sides of the y-axis. Is he correct? Well, here the correct answer is no, simply because it could be a translation um, of 6, 0. Then moving on to question 21b, it says the diagram shows a triangle CDE and PQR. And the question is saying CDE is mapped by PQR by combining two single transformations. The first one is a rotation of 90 degrees anticlockwise about E. Describe fully the second transformation. So here what we've got is our transformation. Uh, and the actual correct answer we should have is the fact that it is an enlargement by scale factor of minus two because the shape has sh uh, shifted and flipped and the center is at minus one zero. So what you need to do for this particular question is first of all reflect the shape 90 degrees anti-clockwise so you're going in this direction with a center here. Then moving on to question 22, it says PTR and QRS are similar triangles. And the question is asking which of these are equivalent to QR over PR. The so QR is this length here. PR is that length there. So you're looking for two corresponding sides of those two triangles. And the correct answer you should have QS over PT. Then moving on to question 23, it says here is a velocity time graph of a, a motorbike for 25 seconds. After how many seconds was the acceleration zero? So for this, it's going to be at what point was is the graph at a flat surface? And that is going to be at this point here, which I would say is roughly around six seconds. The next question then says work out the distance traveled in the last 15 seconds. So for this, what we need to do is work out the area of the last 15 seconds. So from 25 to 10, what we want to do is to work out what this area here is. If I just label that A, the answer to this is the area of A. Now you can see that that is a trapezium. So what we need to do first is first of all, work out the dimensions. So this length here is 15. This top length here, Reading it is roughly around about 18. This distance here is roughly around about 22. So this is my A, this is my B, and this is my H. When working out the area, it's going to be 22 plus 18 multiplied by 15 or divided by 2. And that should give me an answer of 300. Then looking at question 24, it says work out, and then we need to do the square root of 12 and a quarter as an improper fraction. Well, 12 and a quarter, if we convert that into a mixed number, is as an improper fraction is 49 over 4. So what we're doing is the square root of 49 over 4. I could square root both numbers, so that gives me 7 over 4. And for question 24, it says work out the cube root of 16 as a power of 2. So for this, I've got the cube root. Now, if I convert 16 as a power of 2, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the power of 4. Then using indices, 
what I've got and using sort of this notation here where B is the power, C is the root. So here I've got two, the power is four and the root is three. So there is. Well, question 25 says in an office, there are twice as many females as males. A quarter of females wear glasses, a th a three eighths of males wear glasses. 84 people in the office wear glasses. Work out the number of people in the office. So for this, if we just say that males equals X, then that means that the females is twice as many is going to be 2X. Now, based on the information that I've got, is I know that a quarter of females, so a quarter of 2X, plus 3 eighths of X, all add up to 84. So simplifying all of this, I get a half X, plus 3 eighths x equals 84. Get a common denominator, so I've got 4 over 8x plus 3 over 8x equals 84, which then becomes 7 over 8x equals 84. And I want to try and get what x is. So here I've got 7x equals 8 times 84, which is 672. And then divide that by 7, and I get 96. So here, in terms of the males, there are 96. In terms of the females, there are 2 times 96, which gives me 192. And then the total amount is going to be 96 plus 192, which is 280. And moving on to question 26, it says expand and simplify. So for this, we just need to remember that this is a double bracket. So I get x minus 4, and then I've got 2x plus 3y, 2x plus 3y. Now, it doesn't matter which order you do this, but again, um, I'm going to go for expanding these two first. So I've got x minus 4 equals, no, x minus 4, and then multiplying that out. So I get 4x squared plus and then it's going to be 6xy plus 6xy plus 9y squared. Then neatening it all up, I get x minus 4, and then 4x squared plus 12xy plus 9y squared. Then what I need to do is expand out the first bracket. So I get 4x cubed plus 12x squared y plus 9xy squared. And then multiply everything by minus 4. So then I've got minus 16x squared minus 48xy and minus 20, uh, sorry, 36y squared. Then if I just simply, have I got any common factors? Uh, I don't, so that there is my final answer. So looking at question 27, it says that P has a coordinate of minus one, four is a point on the circle with center O. And the question is asking us to work out the equation of the tangent to the circle at P. Give your answer in the form of Y equals MX plus C. So looking at this first question, let's first of all write down the coordinates of P. So that's at minus one and four, which means that this point here is minus one and this point here is four. And if I draw a line of P going to O, we can then work out what the gradient of that line is by using the formula. So here the gradient of P to O is going to be uh, 4 over 1, which is going to give me 4. But because the line is going down, it's going to be 4. Now, this line here is perpendicular to the tangent because that line there is the radius. And this here is a tangent which means that the two lines are going to be perpendicular. So that means that the gradient of the tangent equals, and it's going to be minus 4 times minus, or well, the negative reciprocal. So it's going to be minus 1 over minus 4, which is just a quarter. So m equals a quarter. So let me just go back and write this down. So I've got y equals a quarter x plus c. Now I know that the coordinates of P is minus one, four. So this is my X value. This is my Y value. So I've got four equals a quarter 
times minus 1 plus c. So then working this out, I get 4 equals minus a quarter plus c. So c equals, and it's going to be 4.25. So then the equation of the line is going to be y equals 0.25x plus 4.25. So if you want to write that in fractions, then it's going to be y equals a quarter x plus, and then it's going to be uh, 9 over 4. So any of those answers would be. Then moving on to question 28, it says that the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared, where r is the radius and h is the perpendicular height. The cone has a circular a horizontal base of radius 5, a height of 15. The cone contains water to the depth of 9 centimetres. Work out the volume of the water in centimetre cubed to give your answer in terms of pi. The first thing we need to do when looking at a frustrum is first of all work out what the scale factor is going to be. Now here we know that we've got two lengths. So here I've got this small cone here and the big cone. Now the height of the big cone is 15 and this length here is going to be 15 take away 9 which is 6. So my scale factor is going to be 5 over 2. Now so in terms of this, then we can then work out what the radius of the small cone is going to be, which is going to be 5 divided by 2.5, which gives me an answer of 2 centimetres. So this length here is 2 centimetres. Now from this, what I can then do is work out the, air, the volume of the frustrum. So the volume of the water, I should say, is going to be the volume of the big cone minus the volume of the small cone. So working at this, I'll just highlight this in green. So the volume of the big cone, I'm just going to substitute the values into this formula. So I've got a third times pi times the radius squared, which is 5. So it's 5 squared times 15. And then, put that in brackets minus the volume of the small cone which is a third times pi times 2 squared times then from this if I then work out all of those I get this volume of the big cone simplifying is 375 pi over 3 minus and then it's 24 pi over 3 now I'm keeping it over 3 just to make it easy for me to work with and then simplifying all of that, I get 351 pi over 3. And then doing 351 divided by 3 gives me 117. There is the final. So moving on to question 29, which is our last question. It says simplify 2 sine 45 minus sine 45 over 4 tan 60. And you want to write your answer in the form that's shown there. So First things first, let's work out and remember our exact values of trig. So sine 45 is 1 over root 2. Um, tan 45 is just 1. And tan 60 is 1 over, uh, sorry, it's root 3. So substituting all of these into this what do we get it's going to be a complete utter mess so let's have a look so we're going to get uh, 2 times and then it's 1 over root 2 minus 1 all over 4 lots of root 3 so then let's simplify all of this so I get 2 root 2 minus 1 over 4 root 3 now, if I then try and split this up to see what we actually get, so let's first of all get a common denominator at the top. So that's going to equal 2 root 2 minus root 2 over root 2 all over 4 root 3. Then that then becomes 2 minus root 2 over root 2 divided by 4 root 3. Now, if I then convert that, Try and get it the same. So here I've got 2 root 2 over no, 2 minus root 2. Can't forget that. 
over root 2 times and then we flip this fraction so if I have it like so I get 1 over 4 root 3 which then becomes uh, 2 minus root 2 over and then if we multiply all of this out what do we get well we get 4 root 6 now again what we want to do here is we want to try and rationalize the denominator so if I multiply this by root 6 root 6 let's see what we get well we're going to get 2 root 6 minus root 12 over and then it's 4 times root 36 which is 2 root 6 minus now root 12 is also known as root 4 times root 3 which is 2 root 3 all over and then it's 4 times 6 which is 24 and from this I can then simplify it so I get can divide everything by 2 and so what do I get well I get root 6 minus root 3 all over 12 and that looks like it's in this form where a b and c are uh, integers so the answer then is root 6 minus root 3 all over 12 and there is my final answer in the end of this paper now we'll put the grade boundaries in the description below so you can see once you've marked your paper to see what grade you would have got on this individual paper.